Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast here on Blab. I'm your host, as always, Peter Ramoliotis. And on Twitter, I go as PD Beats. This is, of course, the podcast where we have digital dialogues in the worlds of social media, sports, and pop culture. We took a week break. Uh, we're back this week with a really cool panel. We're going to talk about sports. We're talking about television. I'm going to introduce the panel. We were originally supposed to have three guests, but we have two. So I'm going to introduce the panel. First, we have Olympic gold medalist for Team Canada at the Sochi 2014 Olympics and the contestant on Amazing Race Canada, Natalie Spooner is on the show. Natalie, welcome. I don't know if I'm supposed to wave. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a uh, two-time pop alternative guest right now. We have the social media coordinator for the New York Islanders in the National Hockey League, Rachel Sw- Schwartz, is with us. Rachel, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. So, Natalie, do you want to have some opening? Do you want to? Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, do you want to give some opening remarks, introduce yourselves to our viewers? and Oh, sure. What's uh, going on? Yeah. So I started hockey when I was five, and I've been playing ever since. I had my first tryout with the senior team in 2007, and I made the Four Nations Cup team in 2008, but then got cut every year until 2011 when I finally made the senior team. And then I've been with the team ever since and went to the 2014 Sochi Olympics. Um, that we won, and then after that, I was lucky enough to go on the Amazing Race Canada with my teammate Megan Mickelson. Awesome! Yeah, no, that uh, we're definitely going to talk about that. Rachel, last time you came on the show, <laughs> you like just started with the New York Islanders. I had, yeah. Like it's, it was like really fresh. It really was like literally that I had just started like two days before. So now <laughs> that you've gone through a full now season, I must season veteran, you know, you can say more about it now, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it's it's great. Can't say can't say anything but great things about the Islanders. Let's hope that playoffs go well. So you're you're social media coordinator. So you're doing for our viewers that don't know, you're you're uh, posting a lot of the social media content that comes I from many platforms. I am the one and only for Islanders social media. Oh. So. <laughs> okay, relax there. The one and only. I know. I'm just saying, like. <laughs> That's awesome. That's just do it all, but no, it's it's good. That's really cool. So, the the stuff I wanted to talk about on the show is, you know, and, and Natalie, it's gonna be really cool to, to for you to answer some of these questions because, uh, you know, when I think of sporting events, you know, you have the live like, you have, well, when you think of television, you have the live sporting events. We also have, you know, the reality shows and television shows, and you know, with the ad, social media is a big part of pop alternative, and you know, with the advent of social media. You know, we're seeing a lot of, you know, cross-promotion between sports and television shows, and we're seeing a lot of, you know, um, different ways that television shows are being promoted through social media. Um, You being a contestant on The Amazing Race Canada and having, you know, um, Team Canada games being shown nationally um, for women's hockey, what, what, what do you think, like, the biggest changes over the years have been when it comes to uh, in the digital age of, you know, how television shows are promoted and what what have you seen? Are there, you know, some things that have changed for the good, for the bad, from your perspective as an athlete? I mean, I think it's been good. Um, I think just getting people aware of women's hockey, I think, was a big struggle in the beginning. And to be able to have a following on Twitter and a following on Facebook, um, it definitely helps just to get the awareness out there that, you know, we are playing. And a lot of people do watch the Olympics, but they kind of forget about us the other three years in between. So um, to have people kind of follow, I mean, I play for the Toronto Fury. So to have people follow that team, um, I think that social media has really helped um, with that hockey league and specifically the CWHL um, to just get more people out to our games and more awareness around the game. Absolutely. And, and Rachel, what do you, can you comment on that too? You know, we we spoke about that last time you were on the show a little bit about that perspective, but you being with the New York Islanders and, you know, the whole concept of the second screen where you're, you're on your phone, um, how has that elevated the game in your perspective? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's uh, it's huge from a perspective of, especially in the NHL. I mean, 
I can tell you, like, if I send a tweet out 30 seconds after someone scores, fans are like, you're so behind, like, you're so late. How are you? Know? Like, people want their info right now. Um, but it's it's cool because it's like, a you know, there's a constant conversation going on around everything. And I think, um, like Natalie said, like, it just makes it for so much more exposure, um, especially in women's hockey. You know, when I was working for USA Hockey, um, I worked with the women's world's team, too. And it's it was always, you know... Social media is how we got coverage out when the games weren't broadcast and people get really into it and follow along, and it's, you know, it's exciting. A little bit of a rivalry I popped her into today. <laughs> Canada versus we'll, USA Hockey. We'll keep it, you know, level here. We'll, we'll keep it clean. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, and Natalie, another thing, too, is you mentioned, um, you know, women's hockey has definitely come a long way, and, you know, the international hockey, and you mentioned, you know, the the – CWHL do you do you think that you know social media has been you know a quote unquote a lot of people have mentioned it maybe as like a savior like it really helps the exposure level of women's hockey but do you think that television and you know you see Rogers hometown hockey on sports that does a really good job at times of promoting women's hockey and has players on and from their hometown and you know having you know Jen Bottero who played for Team Canada on the show does that do TV shows, aside from social media, do you think that there is a, you know, um, a push to get women's hockey out there? I mean, I think so. So I think the biggest, um, I guess, problem with women's hockey is we wear cages, right? So no one can really relate to us. We're not really people to them, whereas the guys wear the half mask and you can see their face. So I think any time we can get on TV or get exposure and become a person to someone, um, it's always going to help the game because people, when people get to know you, they want to watch you and they want to cheer for you. So the more we can get out there, then I think that it's helping. Yeah, I mean, you do. Got, you guys take some pretty amazing selfies before the games too, <laughs> and you can see your faces in those. Yeah, in but people have to be on social media for that. Yeah, <laughs> on the TV. <laughs> yeah. and, and Rachel, what a, a big like platform that you know a lot of sports are are looking at right now too is uh, are using is snapchat snapchat's oh, become yeah. really big um yeah. what what do you think about you know snap like we were talking we i mentioned selfies and all that and the whole this whole concept of like behind the scenes content um yeah. past guests have come on and said you know one of the big things with social media is the behind the scenes snapchat is like the definition of behind the scenes because there's small little snaps and you know do you think that those type of platforms are not coming in and, and being of prime importance in terms of how we deliver the product? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if, I think for everyone, like it's it's kind of like an inside look for fans, you know, because it just feels like more exclusive when you're like looking at a snap that's in real time and it's only there for 24 hours and it's like, you know, you know, it's happening right then and there. So you feel like you're part of what's going on right in that moment. And I think that's what fans find so cool. And I know like for us, we do contests and, um, you know, try and get the guys to do Snapchat takeovers because it, it helps, you know, to kind of portray their personalities a little more, which I'm sure, um, you know, Natalie knows, like it's a probably a great marketing tool for them too. I'm sure if she has Snapchat, she's probably got a lot of followers to <laughs> follow everyone, you know, and like basically just feel like they're part of that experience whenever you're traveling to a, a game or a tournament or, you know, whatever's yeah. going on. Yeah, and now are you you're on Snapchat, are you? I have like a personal Snapchat. I don't really know how to set up like one for other people to see. <laughs> I should maybe figure that out. That'll be my next. I thing. can help you with that. I'll help you I set can... up your public Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, we're not only gonna like talk. I just I thought social media would be like a good icebreaker, but I also want to talk <laughs> about. Well, yeah, um, Rich was laughing because I literally. Eat, sleep, and breathe social do, media yeah, on a daily do. basis. But um, <laughs> what I was gonna, what I was gonna also mention too is the world has, in my opinion, become very photo based. You guys agree with that? It's all about pictures. Um, on Instagram, one of my favorite accounts to follow is the NASA account because <laughs> space is awesome. <laughs> And I highly recommend you guys follow the NASA Instagram accounts because you'll just be sitting and just being like in awe of how awesome it is so i think pardon me i'll have to go check it out i don't think i've ever yeah no it's it, <laughs> yeah someone <laughs> just 
So people could comment on the show. And my buddy Richard Bue on the right just quoted me as saying, space is awesome. Because <laughs> he's, he's a funny guy. By the way, Natalie, Richard Bue is the video coach for the Carlton Ravens ho- uh, men's hockey team. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. So a little bit of a hockey connection there. But, yeah, so Instagram, that that is a big, you know, photo base. Um, what do you think of this concept, too, of, you know, like live, I, I thought of like, you know, you'd live tweet, uh, you know, uh, when you live tweet a game, you're live tweeting with emojis and all that and text. But, you know, it would, a lot of people, you know, like with using GIFs and all that are trying to, you know, literally recreate it with images and live tweet, you know, GIFs of goals or stills of goals. That I think brings in a completely different level of it because you're literally live tweeting or like live posting only with photos. So now, do you think, do you agree with the statement that, you know, over like, uh, like the 10, the, like the five, 10 year period, we've definitely got like photos in general have become a lot more popular. I mean, for sure. I mean, everyone's all about the selfie, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like there's certain, like the selfie stick, the selfies. So I feel like everyone is totally into taking pictures and kind of sharing, obviously because I think it's because of the social media platforms, everyone wants to share their life and, um, with everyone else, so the only way to do that is kind of take pictures, especially Instagram. Team Canada has some really good selfies. <laughs> I might or might not be on your stat, your Instagram right now, but there, oh, gosh. there's a lot of there's a lot of selfies there, and I, and, and I, I, it's 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 good stuff. Um, but Ra- Rachel, you look at the Islanders and yeah. the players. And, you know, you say that – we've had conversations about it. They, they have a lot of fun, you know, with Snapchat and contests and all that. Yeah. Do you, do you see an effort from hockey players in the National Hockey League to – that in terms of being open to, you know, trying new platforms or maybe posting a little bit more? Do you see a bit of that, like, like the process? Yeah, you know, I think um, I think it probably depends on the team and the guys and what, you know, like how comfortable they are with it. I think it's, you know, like – it's it's always fun like and i think they they like to have fun with it um fans definitely have fun with it and it's um you know i think snapchat too in particular like you know instagram and twitter and facebook are one thing but i think snapchat's a little easier for for those like our islanders fans are very involved and it's great but like you know it's a lot less pressure when you people can't comment on your post and you know say how ridiculous you look or like um so i think snapchat is like you know it's a lot of fun and yeah but you get screenshot and then it lives forever and people that's have done true. that, that is and, true. and people you know how how people you do know, that it's absolutely you, true. you know how fantastic people are in oh, yeah. society these days they're just great editors. oh i know no but it's um i mean it's great you see you've probably seen like you know the nhl does an awesome job working with snapchat doing the live events and you know just the other day we had one when we played in washington in clinch playoffs and you know they had like ov doing selfies and all the guys coming in from like their their cars and doing all these fun fun chats so it's it's cool Absolutely, and uh, Natalie, Team Canada uh, during the Worlds had a really good time with with the social media. Um, and what I find really interesting is the World Junior Hockey Team for Team Canada was kind of like the opposite; like they were off social media. Was like as the players were. Yeah, the players were not oh. on social media, and yeah. Team Canada, you guys, that was like the exact opposite. Like, I was finding out, like, what was going on and, like, updates, literally, like, what time you were practicing at. And I, I knew everything that was going on. Like, you were, like... Maybe it's you, for you were, girls. Yeah, <laughs> girls, girls are definitely way more into it. I can... I can you, were, you, were like the, you were, like, the insider. You yeah, were, people like, like to hear about it. Yeah, no, absolutely. We were in Canada. So, like, people that are in Canada could actually come watch and come out to things. So, they were pretty pumped. Yeah, no, for sure. For obviously the outcome wasn't what people wanted at the end, but uh, not everyone. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. Uh, it was a great, great competitive tournament. Yeah, it was. But you know, the the Canada USA rivalry is 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 a rivalry. There's nothing in, in, better in women's hockey in general. No. I 
I mean, Rachel, it's all good. Like, Sochi. You guys always get us in the Olympics. I know, because I worked for NBC <laughs> for Sochi, so I, I watched it all. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, Sochi was a good time. <laughs> but, Natalie, I have to say, that was probably one of the, let alone, like, women. Like, that was, like, in my opinion, like, and I've watched hockey for many years. That was one of the greatest games I've ever seen. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. That, that was that yeah. was amazing. What was it like being a part of that? Like, I know that's kind of like a... Yeah, it was stressful. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, obviously, it was my first Olympics, so I was so nervous even just, like, going into that game. Oh, was like, your, those your first? Yeah. Really? You didn't play in Vancouver? No, I got. I didn't make it. Uh. <laughs> yeah. um, so it was my first one, so I was so nervous. And then, obviously, we were down, and um, it's kind of hard to, like, not make your brain, like, think so negatively, but, you know, you try to stay positive, and then uh, we got that first goal, and then the puck hit the post, and we kind of all, like, looked at each other, we're like, the hockey gods, they're, like, with us, and, <laughs> and there was gave us the energy. <laughs> there was controversy, too, like, the linesman was in the way. <laughs> yeah, the linesman hit our player, though, so that they yeah. had the chance to, like, shoot it I down. I remember, it was, like, I think it was Tara <laughs> Watchorn was, like... I think it was Ward. Kath was it Catherine Ward? Well, no, but was I mean, Ka Watchorn was, like, livid, like, Watchorn <laughs> She was like, what's yeah. going on? Like, I saw, like, a yeah. girl, like, skate by. But, yeah, no, that was – and, you know, the fact that you had millions of Canadians watching that, you know, afterwards you getting, you know, like, leaving the ice, that must have that must have been just, like, a crazy feeling, right? You know, like, the that's the definition of the not even national stage, the global stage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was exciting. And my whole family was there, so as soon as we won, I tried to kind of find them in the stands and see them. And then one of the coolest things was actually coming back to Canada. And we got to the airport. There was, like, so many people that just showed up just to, like, see our medals and kind of cheer us on, I guess. Yeah. Here. So it was really cool how, like, Canada responded to it and um, how many people had actually watched that game. And everyone knew exactly where they were yeah. know, during that game. <laughs> oh, it was, it was insane. My dad was on a business trip, and I remember him being – he was in uh, – he was actually in Vancouver, and he had a – they he had like a business meeting and they were all watching the game in the, mm -hmm. the in the uh, boardroom and it was like in they said he said he'll never forget where it was like you just mentioned so it was just insane and mo moving on now uh like from you know social media specifically television because you know on pop alternative we're fans of television we're fans of reality television we've had two members uh two contestants from uh, season 11 of the bachelorette on the show before yeah, we JJ, JJ Lane, yeah. who's a big hockey fan, and Clint Arliss uh, was on the show as well. Natalie Spooner, you were on the Amazing Race Canada, Amazing Race, like one of my favorite shows. That must have been stressful, but fun, but also stressful. It's pretty stressful. <laughs> um, it's totally different than hockey because obviously you know every day you're going to go play a hockey game. So it was pretty crazy waking up in the morning and knowing you're about to rip a clue and had no clue where you were going uh, <laughs> until that moment so Emphasis that was on crazy. clue clue yeah <laughs> always read your clue <laughs> read your clue <laughs> how was the how was the host how was john john he was awesome yeah he's funny and he's so good at that job yeah no it's uh we i was really excited to hear that he had the he got the gig because, you know, they were teasing that for a couple of weeks. Like, we were announcing next week, who, and he was, like, an Olympian. And we had some – we had a couple of – me and my friends were like, oh, maybe it's Alexander de Patsy. Maybe – like, because they said it was they, – they did a clue. It was, like, an Olympian. Mm -hmm. And we weren't sure who it was. But then we are like, oh, John Montgomery. That – why why didn't I think of that? But, yeah, no, that, that was really cool. And that's what I wanted to ask you. And, Rachel, you could also um, – chime in on this as well because the this live sporting event and then the reality show you've been you know those are both two spectacles Natalie that are been on tv that you've been a part of what do you what is the first thing that comes to mind in terms of you know I mean the amazing race the pace it is a race but like just like like sports and and non-sports what is the main thing on the top of your head that you find is different from it like the is the pace completely different the preparation like what what do you like what's the difference between playing <laughs> hockey and the amazing <laughs> race yeah no like but the like the, the no the tele like the the televised aspect of it right oh well i don't really see much of the televised part when i'm playing the game well no i mean even <laughs> um, the before and doing like the promos and the interviews like the whole yeah because like it's like 
it's part of the whole game, right? You know, you do the intermission interview of Tessa Banam and Yeah. You don't get retakes really with those. <laughs> Although you don't get yeah, retakes no, on the amazing race either. That's so. that's a good point. Yeah. No, I don't absolutely. know. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty similar, I guess. You're in front of a camera. The only thing is in the race, you're always running or <laughs> something stressful. Because it's, it's a race, of course. Yeah. But I get. I guess they're a bit similar. I would say hockey, I've done it my whole life, so playing is way more stressful, actually, like, than the race. Like, it, I think hockey is a lot harder just mm-hmm. because, like – it's my dream and I want to do really well. Whereas the race, you kind of go in with no expectations. As long as we didn't get out the first, the first leg, we were like, okay, we're good. Let's just keep trucking. Would um, you, would you describe your performance on that reality show as amazing? <laughs> I'd say we had some amazing <laughs> legs. We had some pretty bad ones too, though. <laughs> oh yes. There were some, there were some moments. I <laughs> talk about them. <laughs> How did, wait, how did you guys do? Because I obviously did not see Amazing Race Canada, so. We ended up coming second. Oh, my But we my won, God. like, a lot of the legs going to the finals. We won, like, seven of the ten legs, and then we lost the finals. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. okay. Two team that hadn't won any. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty disappointing. You two were on fire beginning of that show, too. Like, every challenge. Yeah, it was it was kind of crazy. We kind of couldn't believe ourselves because we were like, let's just not get out the first leg. Let's make it past. Uh, um, and, and Rachel, you know, we've 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 talked before. We're you know, aside from hockey and social media, we're both really into pop culture as well. What do you think yeah. about this incorporation of pop culture in sports and social media? One of the coolest things you've done with the New York Islanders social media is you use the gif from one of my favorite Nickelodeon shows oh, yeah, Rocket Power. Ro- Rocket Power <laughs> the Wuggity. Now did you remember that show, Rocket Power? No. You don't no? remember that show? No. Oh, it, was a Nickel- it was a Nickelodeon I need to go show. Look now. It Such was just a good a- show. It was like about kids who played street hockey and they were just like total I don't even know what they they were unreal. Their dad yeah. Raymundo owned like <laughs> Shore Shack, which was like I a need to Google this. Oh yeah, definitely, beach. definitely Google it. And watch a few episodes. <laughs> and like Mar- Martin Brodeur and like Luke Robitaille like guest starred on an episode too. Like they left their voices because they won like a tournament, and like the winner of the tournament got to play, um, to play them like in like a charity game or something, like it, it, like an all star game. Like it was hockey and snowboard, snowboarding and race- skateboarding was their main sport. Skateboarding right? and street hockey, yeah. And surfing. Yeah. They surfed too. They were just like all around, you know. <laughs> they were sport. Like, it, it was really cool. But yeah, incorporating pop culture. Everyone loves pop culture. But sometimes right. you have to make sure that, you know, you use something. Because something that me and you know, other people like Natalie won't know. Like, she didn't know what Rocket Power was, right? So it's kind of hard. Well, you got to judge what people are going to, you know relate to and you know what they're gonna feel connected to because like you have no idea how much time I spend going through gifts and like just you know or I'll I'll like run it by like five or ten of my friends before and be like if I use this like drink rap lyric do you have any idea what I'm referring to and they'll be like no you're crazy (laughs) (laughs) we 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 had um Pat Donahue who does the social uh, digital media for the LA Kings on the show and he was talking about yeah. that too but he was talking about he loves like he loves the whole feeling of tweeting something that not everyone knows but then when you know when the small get, amount yeah, of people yeah, yeah. get it yeah, totally. when they comment like <laughs> he was talking if there's a movie we liked called Heavyweights which was like a really funny movie from the 90s mm-hmm. and then there was like uh, the Three Ninjas was another one we talked about for a long time and it's like you put those like 90s movies in there that like some people knew and some people didn't because nostalgia is a powerful thing like oh, there's absolutely. no there's no stopping it totally. like Nat- like Natalie another thing too is. How many people are always going to, you know, it, it could be like 10, 15 years down down the road. And that's that 2014 Sochi game will always be there. Like nostalgia will never leave, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it was one of the best hockey games ever, if not like, especially for women's hockey. So I feel like yeah. people will remember that unless there's another one that's better. But I hope there's not one that's that close coming up. <laughs> <laughs> How do you... T- take us through the, the 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 pregame aspect of it. Like, is it like, are there any you know specific things that um, 
that that you got that you guys do like obviously there's some stuff you like that's maybe secret and confidential like team rituals you know but um i, I guess there's situations because i've talked to other players like zach boychuk who's in the carolina hurricanes organization two-time world junior champ hockey championship gold medals he came on the show and like i didn't get a chance to ask him but like are there any pre-game rituals that you have that you're allowed to share with mm-hmm. us <laughs> That I have personally, um, I always put my left, like left equipment on first, like my left shin pad, my left skate, oh. which is kind of okay. weird. But other than that, like not really too much. Like when we're with Canada, we always play a game called shoulders. So it's like keep ups, but you only count the amount of times the soccer ball goes off your shoulders. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, we set a pretty good, I think we set a record like 82 or something this time. So it was, it was pretty good. Rachel, I've seen you like Snapchat or Instagram photos of the of the players doing soccer before games. Oh yeah, it's that's like that's a thing in hockey. Yeah, that's that's a thing. The soccer. Mm-hmm. The oh yeah, I even like what when I played, we always did it too. Like it's it's just I think like every hockey player is somewhat decent at soccer. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, Tessa Bonham uh, was on the show a couple of weeks ago, and she spoke about how. She thinks, you know, it's ideal, um, no matter what sport you're playing, to play other sports as well. So if you're like a hockey player, it's important for you to play other sports as well. So a lot of hockey players played soccer or baseball in, you know, the summer. And you see that more and more. And you talk to a lot of people, and they play a lot a lot of different sports. Wayne Gretzky stated, like, you, it, it's it's almost like – crucial to play many sports especially in the summer to keep up now do you play any other sports uh growing up i played soccer in the summers but like in high school i pretty much played like every sport i could so i did like swimming badminton volleyball wow. soccer field hockey <laughs> badminton like, pretty, is fun badminton i did badminton one year badminton <laughs> and is I fun doubles doubles <laughs> They're one of my favorite videos i gotta find it it was how to pass time when you're bored waiting for the subway, and it's two guys playing <laughs> in this badminton. badminton. So they pretend <laughs> they have jackets, and they're like, and the other guys are like, and they had an audience around them, and it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. That's funny. I know. It one. was. It was really funny. But Rachel, kind of a yeah. good day tomorrow. <laughs> game one. Yeah, I know. Islanders, Panthers. Got some nerves. Yeah. <laughs> it's your first time with a National Hockey League team, though, correct? You were with NBC. You're with USA Hockey. Yeah. Yeah. It's my first so time working your, for, your, especially in playoffs. I mean, yeah, I've, I've, you know, worked with some teams as an intern doing, like, freelance stuff. But, yeah, this is my first time, like, kind of running the show. So. <laughs> oh, running the yeah. show. No, I'm yeah. Come on. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm pulling your leg. It's all good. I know. I know. <laughs> What uh, what can we expect from the social media aspects of the Islanders? You know, Anything that you can divulge? First round is probably going to be relatively subtle. Not, you know, at least it just really depends on how the game goes, how the fans are. You got to just kind of take it game by no, game and see what see what's going, see what's happening. No, no, so. no, no rocket power gifts. You might see some rocket power gifts make an appearance, but Natalie, mention a show. What show? What 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 was your favorite like cartoon growing up? Oh gosh, uh, I liked like Recess, Arthur. Oh yeah, those were. Oh Arthur was oh, uh, real. Arthur, so good. <laughs> don't get me so Arthur. Arthur is the. I've said this. I'm gonna say it again. Arthur is the greatest show of all time. I said, I, oh, man. It is. It, it's, it's, it's a good one. Rachel, I've told you many times. We've, we've talked before. about this before, yeah. Oh, um, I don't even, I, we're, I, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up soon because if I start talking about Arthur, we will be off <laughs> in an hour. You can start singing the song. That can be your, uh, <laughs> yeah, your that can be your theme. Having fun isn't hard. What do you got? A library library card. card. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, I want to thank you both for uh, coming on the coming on the show. I understand you are both very very busy, so thank you for making the time. Uh, Natalie, anything you want to close with? 
Uh, nope, I think I think we got a lot with Arthur. Ending with Arthur. <laughs> yeah, Arthur D- DW, DW yeah. is pretty sassy. I'm just gonna say that. Francine! <laughs> oh, Francine, Francine is the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Francine's pretty cool. Uh, B- Binky was another character. But yeah, uh, we're not talking about Arthur anymore because I'll go on forever. But Rachel, <laughs> at closing remarks. Um, no, just go Islanders. I don't know. <laughs> oh. Are the Islanders going to win tomorrow? I'll say yes. Ha, 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 good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was so empathetic. Come on. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, it is. That's like, he has this thing where he does like the hashtag I'll say, but he spells it like Islanders, like I-S-L-E. It's very funny. Thank you. Credit. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> this has been Pop Turnative. Uh, Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Rachel. Good luck to the Islanders tomorrow and for the rest of the playoffs. Uh, You could uh, watch previous episodes of Pop Turnative on our YouTube page and our SoundCloud page, and you could follow us on Twitter, and you could like us on Facebook. Thank you, and have a good night. I'm going to go watch Arthur. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.